Hello, and welcome back to Quick Charge by Electrek. I'm Mikey G, and it's Saturday, November 19th. There's a fair amount to cover, starting with Tesla. We'll go ahead and begin with the good news. Tesla has been delivering record numbers of vehicles, revenue, and profit, but it hasn't been reflected in the stock performance. Tesla's stock is down over 30% since August, while the Nasdaq is down only 8% over the same period. Morgan Stanley analyst Adam Jonas, a longtime Tesla bull, came out this week with a new note to clients in which he noted that Tesla stock is getting closer to his $150 per share bear case, and that makes it more attractive on the EBITDA multiple basis. Now, the analyst believes that it is creating, quote, a window of opportunity for opening prospective Tesla investors. Tesla has issued another so-called safety recall, but in reality, it was solved with an update to owners of the cars. They didn't have to do anything. Whenever there is a safety-related issue, the NHTSA has to call it a safety recall in those words, even if the automaker doesn't have to physically do anything. And that leads to some confusion. It's actually led to news outlets around the world blasting the term around when it doesn't exactly apply. I think the term safety update is a little more true to life, but what do you think? Tesla has now expanded to the country of Italy to its pilot program of giving supercharger access to non-Tesla electric vehicles. This now covers most of Europe, actually. Despite the fact that it's a pilot program, it has multiple access in multiple countries, with only a few exceptions of Central and South European countries and also the Balkans. Tesla is currently working on a lithium refinery project that would be coming to Corpus Christi, Texas. And it sounds like the automaker is in the final stretch of their negotiations with the authorities. On Wednesday, a local news outlet reported that the county commissioners unanimously voted to move negotiations between county leaders and Tesla to executive sessions. More details about the project were revealed as part of the negotiations, including that Tesla would invest about $365 million in the plant, which would employ about 165 people. Tesla is aiming to produce about 100 Tesla semi-trucks this year, which is actually quite more than anticipated. The information came from an unlikely source. During the trial over Elon Musk's compensation plan at Tesla, Robin Denholm, the chair of Tesla's board, was testifying and said that Tesla may produce 100 semis this year. Okay, let's move into the not-so-great news for Tesla. We mentioned previously that Tesla's stock has fallen dramatically in recent events, and there is certainly more to the story. Tesla investors are starting to get increasingly concerned that Elon Musk's focus on Twitter is taking him away from the auto business. The CEO tried to reassure them by saying that he has Tesla covered, but at the same time he is also sleeping at Twitter's headquarters, saying that he will do so until social media is fixed. The CEO has been known to spend a lot of time at his companies when they are facing challenges, including when he was sleeping at the Tesla factory floor when ramping up the Model 3 production. The list of companies Musk is now running totals with Tesla, Twitter, SpaceX, The Boring Company, and Neuralink. According to new comments from Tesla's board member James Murdoch, Elon Musk has a successor in mind to become the next Tesla CEO. During the aforementioned trial of Musk's pay structure, the director didn't specify who his successor would be, but he did say that Musk mentioned the person in a somewhat recent conversation. To speculate a little bit, possible internal successors could be the CFO, Zach Kirkhorn, and also Drew Baglino. Looking outside Tesla, Herbert Dees would be quite the poetic choice, as Herbert recently left the CEO role of Volkswagen and was once thought of for the Tesla position in the long-distant past. A new survey shows a significant drop in consumer interest in buying Tesla vehicles, but the reason seems pretty simple. Kelly Blue Book has released their latest brand watch survey, and the company claims that shopper interest in Tesla has plummeted. At the same time, the Model 3 remains the third most desired vehicle according to the survey. Now, the reason for the report and the discrepancy, well, it's really got to be the qualifying federal tax credit that Tesla will get at the new year. Stands to reason that most of the customers are fine waiting just six weeks to save some serious cash on their serious purchase. Tesla has reported two fatal crashes involving autopilot or full self-driving beta to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, but Tesla isn't releasing a whole lot of details, at least publicly. It's not clear if the crash involved the autopilot or the full self-driving beta at this point. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration separates Level 2 driver assist systems and self-driving systems, 
but Tesla is reporting the full self-driving beta as a level 2 system, of course, despite the product name. A lot of items are listed on the report as unknown, despite Tesla having access to a lot of telematics in the vehicles. One of the accidents also happened back in December of 2021, but we're just hearing about it right now. The other one happened more recently in September of 22, and it was reported in the latest batch of crashes from Tesla last month. A former executive of Tesla has pled guilty to charges of insider trading in Australia after he bought stock in a lithium mine before a deal with Tesla was made public. According to the Australian Securities and Investments Commission, the executive had pocketed $28,883.53 in profit after selling his shares when the news broke. Also, he shared the information with a friend and, and thus constitutes a second charge against him. What happens about the friend, though? Does he get his assets seized? I'm going to guess he will. Construction workers at Gigafactory Texas are suing for labor violations amid claims of unsafe conditions at Tesla's site. The allegations in the complaint are mostly targeted not at Tesla, but actually at the construction company of which Tesla hired. They do include unsafe working conditions, which could affect Tesla, but the other complaints are regarding overtime pay and fake credentials being handed to them without proper training. A staff attorney for the Workers' Defense Project claimed that the automaker could have stepped in, but Tesla didn't seem interested in doing so. That claim will be difficult to prove, I'm sure. Okay, let's move into the rest of the industry, quite quickly too. Volkswagen says that the Golf badge will be carried into the EV future, and some people have a lot of hopes for an electric Golf to come out later. Also, Volkswagen plans to build a new $2.2 billion EV plant to produce its flagship Trinity vehicles, but that might not happen. According to Manager Magazine, the CEO, Oliver Bloom, wants to scrap the facility as part of his strategy to clean up the auto group. Vietnamese auto group VinFast has revealed two electric SUVs, the VF6 and the VF7. With a four electric SUV portfolio, one in each of the most popular segments, VinFast is looking to become the EV manufacturer for everyone, as they call it. VinFast also announced that they have broken ground on a 34.5 acre lithium iron phosphate battery factory designed with an annual capacity of 5 gigawatt hours. Mass production is expected to begin in the third quarter of 24. General Motors has secured battery materials from Vail. GM will get a significant part of the nickel sulfate that Vail plans to produce at its upcoming Quebec Battery Valley factory. The fact that the critical battery material is coming from a North American company will give General Motors more access to the full tax credit. At the LA Auto Show, Toyota revealed its BZ Compact SUV concept. In other LA Auto Show news, we got to check out the Hyundai Ioniq 6 up close and personal. Be sure to check out the detailed look by watching a video that I was pleased to edit. Fisker has officially begun production of the Fisker Ocean SUV, which is really good news for them. Since Fisker has partnered with manufacturing giant Magna International, things will be picking up very soon. By the end of next year, Fisker expects to see 42,400 completed vehicles in total. In order to get vehicles made faster, Ford Motor Company is partnering with Rockwell, a leading industrial automation provider. Rockwell says that it can help automakers such as Ford, quote, improve quality, reduce costs, increase responsiveness, and improve time to market through their supply chain. Now, Ford has significant demand for their EVs and also low supply, which actually is common for everybody right now. Holy moly, we did it. Thanks for watching Quick Charge by Electric. Regular episodes Monday through Thursday, and then again on Saturday. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the later.